the video working? Sometimes it doesn't. I see no video. Oh, gotta love YouTube. And there's no video. Of course not. Why would there be video, YouTube? Let's see if it works if I reload. And the video is not working. So again. Working. Connection's good. Hear me? See me? I see no video. Oh, YouTube, come on. <laughs> Can anyone see me? I can hear myself, but that's it. Hey, I see me. <laughs> this YouTube is so buggy. Man, it's like every week you guys tune in to see me struggle trying to get top souls and YouTube working. Um, hey, everyone. Welcome to, what is this, episode 30. It's actually episode 30. I didn't change the number. Uh, episode 30 of Gear Talk, uh, 40 of Gear Talk. It's going to be a rough one. Uh, Gear Talk is the show that I do every other week. I actually uh, skipped a week, I think. Uh, and usually I do it on Wednesday nights. My daughter got sick. Um, she's had the flu for almost a week now. And she's just struggling. Um, and, uh, you know, when she was sick, I didn't really feel like doing a video. So um, I pushed it to today. It is Thursday. And I uh, couldn't be happier to be here. I uh, actually had Monday off, so I was able to skate a little bit during the week. But, um, you know, I'm aching to get out and skate again. It's been so long, it feels like. Um, just skating some street. Uh, I need to get out and skate. This weekend was actually okay. I skated, but it's been so cold and wet that I've been stuck at my uh, indoor skate park. Which is a great skate park, but I'm so bad at skating mini ramp that it is less fun uh, for me than going out and skating street. But, you know, when it's wet and rainy and cold, it just isn't much fun skating street. So you skate where you can. I know a lot of people haven't been able to skate the last few months because of the weather and they don't have access to an indoor skate park. So I'm absolutely not saying uh, that my life is horrible. Uh, but when I have such beautiful skate parks nearby and I cannot skate them, it makes me go crazy. So I'm going to vent a little bit, and uh, that's what Gear Talk is all about. Uh, talk about the gear, the geekier side of skating. So we're going to talk about wheels, we're going to talk about bearings, and skates, and frames, and boots, and things like that. Uh, things that you wouldn't necessarily see uh, on Instagram or Facebook. You know, you don't get that sort of stuff. You get skating-related things. You don't get the details on why skates work the way that they work, why grinds work the way that they do. Um, but I love this stuff. You know, I've been doing uh, skate hardware for, uh, I mean, uh, half my life, it seems. Um, I think I started in 97 uh, with Fitty Fitty, and uh, that was, what, 24 years ago, 23 years ago? Uh, and I'm 43 now, so definitely haven't gone consistently. You know, I took a break, hence back to blading. But um, it's been a while, so um, I absolutely love this stuff, and um, I cannot wait to uh, talk about it. As always, if you have any questions that I can answer, doesn't have to be about the topic that we're talking about tonight, any questions about skating or skates or gear, um, please uh, tune into the live stream. We do this live on YouTube every other week, uh, typically Wednesday nights at 9. This week it's Thursday night at 9. But there is a live chat, and uh, there's a lot of people in there talking. I love seeing the comments. If you have a question for me or a comment for me, Make sure that you tag me in it at Back to Blading so that I can see it. Uh, with the flood of text flying by, it's hard to see. But if it's tagging me, it gets highlighted in yellow so that I can read it. So 
Um, love seeing your questions, love answering your questions, taking skates off of the wall and explaining what I think about them. Um, if you have a question about anything on the wall or anything uh, going on in the industry, I would love to talk about it. All right, as I do for every episode of Gear Talk, um, I start with the current skate setup that I am riding. And this is a weird one because it's been a bit. I've actually switched a few different setups throughout uh, the last couple of sessions. But um, I have one setup that I think counts for everything that I've been exploring, and that is the Adapt with the Wish medium frame. So here they are. All right. So this is the Adapt Self. This is the 2017 model, I think, 2018 model. It's a few years old. They've made some uh, tweaks to it for uh, the 2020 models that you can buy now. This is the full carbon design. So there is a design with a little bit more flexible cuff. This is the very stiff cuff. Um, the Adapt, as, as you might know, is a carbon shell with a uh, leather new buck material covering it. So it feels nice and comfortable. Your foot slides into this carbon, which has a nice padding on the inside. And then the, the leather is uh, what hold your foot into the shell. Very reminiscent of an athletic shoe. If you ever, you know, run or go jogging or something like that, uh, you'll have that same feeling. It feels like a shoe. The comfort is uh, unparalleled. I've never skated skates this comfortable. Negatives to this skate is that this setup is fairly stiff. Um, this cuff is a single piece, so this whole section is carbon which means that the carbon that's very stiff on the bottom is also the carbon that's very stiff on the cuff. So when you're trying to do royales, when you're trying to do top sides, when you're trying to do anything that you need to squish your foot down and go on the outside edge, you really have to bend with your knees versus any give with your ankles because you're not gonna get any play here. It is a very stiff cuff. So you're not gonna be able to push it down like if you had a loose cuff like a, a razor shift or uh, you know a, a majestic 12 or something like that where they have a softer cuff you can squish down and you can really push that down so you don't have to be super flat with your knees to get topside or to get uh, royale these you have to do it all with your knees and i was able to do it with some success not a ton of success i had a really difficult time with the original wish frames um these are the new Wish frames. These are the medium Wish frames. So Wish is um, uh, a frame company that specializes in flat rocker setups. So the outside wheels are bigger than the inside wheels. And what that means is that they can skirt around the UFS bolt, which is right in the middle, and bring this wheel down lower, push it out so that it can give you a nice big groove. The old wish frames, the large wish frames, are longer than these. These are the 269 millimeter setup, so it's 269 millimeters from wheel one to wheel four. The other wish frames are 281, I think. That means that they're longer. So they also fit a 72 millimeter wheel, but the wheelbase from one to four is longer. It's like 10, 15, 10 it's 12 mil longer. So this is the 260 nine so that would be the 281 yeah so it is 12 mil longer it means that it's a longer wheelbase they get around that long wheelbase by having these middle wheels a little bit bigger so they sit a 72 and a 60 millimeter wheel the effective rocker is about half a mil which means that these two middle wheels actually touch first which means that you have a little bit more swizzle than you would if you were just skating a completely flat frame at 281 but it's still a long frame. The biggest problem with those frames, the biggest complaint I would say with those frames, aside from the length for people with smaller feet, is that the groove is a lot taller. And they've addressed that with this medium frame. So this groove is actually lower. It's about 10 mil lower than the, uh, the large frame. Uh, maybe not 10 mil. I don't know how much lower it is. It's, it's a little bit lower. It's not a ton lower. It's not as low as you might think. 
The uh, nice thing about that is that you don't have to get as low when you're doing Royale tricks. So where's my rail? Oops, it's usually back here. Did I lose it? I just cleaned up and I think I lost it. I have a little rail that shows how low you have to get, but if you imagine doing a Royale, the taller the frame means that the more down you have to get, the lower you have to get in order for the frame to touch and the sole plate to touch. So if this were a super deep groove, you could stand up fairly straight and still be on your frame and your sole plate. The higher the frame, the more you have to lift the frame and stay boot down so that you can get uh, boot down, so you can have two points of contact. That means that a taller groove makes Royales more difficult. And I did have some problems doing Royales with these frames. Um, I skated them twice. I skated them once in an outdoor uh, session at Marsh Skate Park, which is my favorite ledge. So I wanted to see what they were like for grinder blading. And then I skated them again at an indoor skate park at the factory, which is where I do mini ramp and I was doing some airs and stuff. Um, they're really good flat frames. So, you know, I haven't done a review. I don't know that I'm going to do a full review on these frames, um, but I, I will share, you know, some thoughts. Um, I think they're a really good flat frame. I think for a flat frame, if you're skating mini ramp and stuff like that, they're probably better than the original Wish frames. The wheelbase being shorter makes it a lot more fun and nimble for me. I also really liked the groove. I liked the way that this locks in so much nicer um, when you're doing Royale tricks, especially on coping. It was very tall with the old one. Actually, I have my old ones over here. Let me get them. So here's the old one. Uh, this is the large wish frame. This is actually the first run of the large wish frames. I was one of the, uh, the early pre-order people. Um, so they might have made some little tweaks over the years since I purchased these, but this is a pretty good representation of what they were like. And you could see the, the, the style is very similar, but it's obvious that there's a much wider gap in the middle with these large frames than with the small ones. The big difference though is that this groove, so if you look at the groove, I, I don't really have a good way of comparing the grooves, but if you look at the groove, it's not that much lower in this frame than it is in this one. So this point, comparing this point to like the bottom of the sole, isn't that much different, but you'll see this much looser, uh, bigger um, uh, curb, I guess, radius. So this is a much tighter radius than this one. And that makes a big difference on ledges. It doesn't make a huge difference on coping, but when I was skating these on ledges, I didn't feel as locked on as I do with these frames. I think these frames, because it has this big, huge, like almost freestyle sort of groove, and this, uh, uh, this flat area is very rounded so when you jump on and you do a Royal, even if I can't get boot down, I feel like I can kind of surf around and still kind of slide. With these, I had a lot more difficult time locking on and feeling solid when I was doing Royale tricks. The groove just being so much tighter, not necessarily deeper. I feel like if this groove were a little bit lower, like towards the wheels, it might be a little better you know, I, I don't know. It's really hard to put into words. My, my skating wasn't as good on these frames as they were on these, but I felt like skating was much better on these than it is on these. And that might have something to do with the length of these frames. That might have something to do with the lack of rocker on these frames, that this is just a flat, uh, you know, 270 basically, which is a really great length for me. But I did have a... Just a, not a great experience doing Royale tricks with these frames. I just felt like it wasn't right. And if you look at the, um, actually, if you look at the way that this, um, this is wearing. So this is my, this is my regular Royale. And you can see where it's wearing on these little edges. Even on this side, which I shouldn't really be touching very much. The fact that it's wearing on these is just weird to me. It's like I'm missing when I'm doing Royale tricks on ledges, it's like I'm missing, but I'm going up on the ledge and I'm grinding it down. 
I don't know that I had much of that on this. I do have some wear on the edge, but it feels like it's a different location. Very curious. Um, these haven't really come out yet. I think some pre-orders have shipped, but they haven't gotten to shops yet. So I'm going to be really curious to see what people think about them when they actually get out there and skate them. I think it's a great flat frame. So if you wanted to skate flat, it's probably one of the best flat frames out there. I haven't skated a ton of dedicated flat frames, but if you're skating a mini ramp, if you're skating coping, you're not going to have any problem with this groove. I think only when you're doing grinds on ledges, Will this groove, this tightness of a groove come into play? Otherwise it feels great to skate. So just skating felt great. One of the things that you're gonna have to figure out with these frames though is the wheel combinations. So with these um, 72, sorry, with the, uh, the large wish, there are plenty of quality 72s out there now and plenty of 60s. I think 60 millimeter wheels are kind of the standard rounded profile now. You know, Undercover makes a really good one. Uh, Gyro makes a really good one. Uh, uh, Lebeda makes a really good one. Almost every, every wheel company, uh, factory, makes a really good 60 millimeter rounded profile wheel now. So finding a rounded 60 isn't too difficult. And there are plenty of rounded 72s if you go with a recreational model if you go with Go Project or Compass, you'll find a rounded 72 pretty easily. So with this, you've got a really nice, almost like a magic rocker, where it's a nice rounded profile here and then a slightly flatter profile on the inside. So when you're doing turns, you're more on the inside, the edges on the inside wheels. It's just a really nice, good control, you know, rounded profile feels really good when you're turning and stuff. The problem with this, is that this is a very flat profile. So these are the Go Project 65s on the outside and the dead 58s on the inside. We do make 58, so 5050 makes a 58. I haven't skated them yet. N not in this setup, I've skated them, but I haven't skated them in this setup. I don't know how much of a difference it will make, but I did feel more, more like Andy Rocker than I did with this. This, I felt like I had a little bit more turning radius and it might be just because of the profile. Like I like the rounded profile. This is much more flat than I am used to. And the problem is you don't have a lot of options. So there's not a lot of 65 millimeter wheels out there. And the ones that are out there have a very similar profile to this. You know, there's no really like, you know, rounded, rounded profile like the 72. There's none of those that are in 65. You can get some 64s, but then you're gonna to have to find a 59. And a 59, I don't know that there's any rounded profile 59s either. Most of the 59s I know of have this flat, um, this flat profile where it's like a rounded, but it kind of sticks out at the edges. It's not an actual like rounded profile. So then you could go down to a 58 and there are 58s, but, or I'm sorry, I got the math wrong. So if you're doing a 64, you would want a 57. I don't know of any good 57s. There are some with a flat profile, um, like the, I think the Them Wheel is a 57. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know Eulogy makes a 57, but there's not a ton of 57s out there. And then you start losing it, right? So 64 is pretty rare. Good luck finding a 63, 62, 61. You can find a 60, but then you're at like, I mean, you're really low in the middle, like a 54, 55 or something like that. So wheels are going to be the biggest problem for this frame. Um, finding a really nice, like if I could find this setup with this sizing, um, I would probably be uh, a, a bigger fan of this frame. I think also these are really hard wheels and I don't like hard wheels. These are 92s and these are like 92s in the outsides. It was a very hard, solid frame, especially with the Adapt. The Adapt is a very solid, because it's carbon on the bottom, it's a very solid skate. And I felt every single vibration. And that wasn't good either. You know, I really like a softer wheel. I like an 88. I mean, I've been skating 85s with the uh, Wish frames and they were great. 92 on the outside just felt like it was way too hard for me. So yeah, it wasn't a great experience. Um, I kind of came away from this thinking, why am I skating flat? Like, why am I trying to skate flat? 
and I actually um, got into some really good conversations. If you um, if you ever use Slack, the group chat program platform, whatever, um, I use it for work. I also use it for a few um, uh, design groups within uh, you know my region. Um, but we also have a back to blading Slack where we talk about skate stuff. If you go to backtoblading.com slash Slack, you get a quick link uh, over to the Slack so that you can join and talk with us. We had a really interesting conversation, I thought, about uh, the merits of skating flat. And I, I don't know that I want to skate flat. Um, I think that if I were skating flat, this is the sort of frame that I would want. I would want something that has, you know, a really nice groove, some wheel bite protection. But it comes with compromises, you know? It's, um, it's, it's not as, I don't know. It's really hard to explain. So when I'm skating any rocker, I feel like I'm in control of everything. Like, or maybe in, in a lot of ways, the skate kind of controls me. So if I'm doing um, an air and I come off of an air and I have the spin just a little bit too much, when I'm skating flat, I still get kind of like a, like an ice skate sort of feeling. So you can kind of land, but you still kind of turn a little bit because there's, you know, this slight rocker, these middle wheels are going to land first. So it makes the wheelbase a little bit shorter. When you're skating any rocker, you just have the big wheels on the outside and you know that when you land, you're just going to land and you just put your feet there and you just go. Um, grinds. So skating this frame, even though this is a very forgiving uh, frame for grinds, I stuck a lot trying to do back royales. Tricks that I can do fairly consistently, but I had a really difficult time doing back royales on ledges with this setup. And I think that that is, you know, expected with a flat frame, but it shouldn't be, you know? I really like doing back royales, and if it means skating a flat frame means I can't do back royales, that's a huge negative to me. So yeah, I kind of have been going through that in my mind the last couple of days, thinking about why am I skating flat? Why am I trying so hard to skate flat? And I don't know that I have a good answer for that, um, especially when you're skating hard wheels like these 92s. There's not a huge advantage for me. Um, I'd love to hear what you have to think about that. Um, e either join the Slack or leave it in some comments, tag me in, in the comments if you have some opinions. But um, why do you skate flat? You know, if you do skate flat, why do you skate flat? Um, the only reason I could come up with for skating flat is if I were skating pavement that was really rough or if I was skating a place that I knew I, I, I needed wheel durability and I didn't want to ride the, uh, the, you know, the hard wheels on the outside because I was going to toast through wheels really quickly. But I don't skate that very often. You know, I skate skate parks mostly, and even the street spots that I skate have really good cement. It's not like I'm skating from spot to spot anymore where I could see flat being helpful. Um, I have a really hard time justifying it right now. So I'd love to hear what you have to think. This is something that I didn't really consider uh, getting into this, but after skating the Wish uh, medium, I realized, you know, there's tricks that I can't do in flat, and I don't know what the advantages are for me skating flat. Maybe you know. So if you have any ideas, I would love to hear them. Um, you know, come on the Slack and talk with us, backtoblading.com slash Slack. Or if you're listening to the, uh, uh, watching it live on the YouTube, uh, leave a comment and uh, let's get some, uh, some dialogue going. I'm, I'm fascinated because back in the days we were told flat is the way to go. And if you don't skate flat, you're cheating. And it's like, you know what? I don't really care anymore. <laughs> I don't care if I'm cheating. You know, for me, I just want to go out and have fun skating. And I have more fun skating any rocker. So, love to hear what you have to think. All right, I'm going to take a drink and see if there's any questions uh, before I start talking about wheels. All right. Um, Scott Malloy, all is good. Uh, thank you so much for letting me know. Yeah, this YouTube is just so sketchy. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does. Before I started the stream and it was all black. And that did absolutely nothing for me. I think you guys could hear me, but you couldn't see me. That doesn't help. So thanks for letting me know that it works. Um, 
Sam Hain. Skate the Solomons. I don't know where they are. I can't find them. I'll, I'll look for them. I'll, I'll see if I can find them. I'm sure they're here somewhere. Uh, ben, good to see you. Hope the oxygens. People are asking about the oxygens, Ben. You need to uh, take some pictures and post after you get that setup going. Um, there's a lot of excitement around your new setup. So, uh, Aussie inline skater. How do you feel about the technology in hockey skates opposed to most high-end skates? Interesting. Um, the technology in hockey skates. Well, I'm not sure specifically what you're talking about. I don't follow hockey technology super closely. Um, I played roller hockey, I think, as a lot of us did getting into the sport. Um, that's my entry to skating. You know, I grew up as an ice hockey player. I was looking for something to do when I wasn't at the rink, got rollerblades, and my brother and I would go to the local school and we would play for hours and hours with our stick and ball and just work on passing and shooting and crossovers and things like that. The technology we were using then was just standard rocker setups, probably 72 mil wheels, absolutely nothing special. I don't know anything about hockey technology. Um, I don't know what's current. I know that they had these crazy things. Uh, where are they? Here they are. They had these crazy things back in the 90s. The uh, V, what are they called? The V-Tech, I think they're called. V-Form. The V-Form. Um, that's an interesting concept. I don't think it went anywhere, but the wheelbase was super short. Um, I know that they don't use these anymore for hockey skating. So I do also know that... Um, Keith, um, I don't remember his last name, uh, but he's the guy who was the inventor of the, uh, the sprung system, which is the system that you find in physics frames. I know that he took his system and moved away from aggressive and went into hockey frames. I don't know how they work or how uh, the response is. I don't know if he's successful or not. I don't know a lot about hockey, so I apologize um, if there are some special hockey specific technologies that they're using now. Um, I would be really curious. I know that hockey wheels um, are super cool, uh, very soft, but they use really big cores. We're going to get into it a little bit more, but they have uh, dual duro wheels, which gives them a nice grip, but still some good cushion um, because they're skating on surfaces that are mostly indoor on tiles, so they'll skate like a 72A, 75A wheel, um, which is crazy for us, right? I mean, we would toast through some of those in one session outside, but if they're skating only on tiles, they can get away with having a really soft wheel, and that gives them really good grip, so that when they're doing their turns, power turns, you know, diving into the corner, grabbing a puck or something like that, they can still hold an edge. But I don't know a lot about them. I've looked at some of those wheels. They look fascinating to me, but I don't know. I've never skated them. I don't know a lot about the technology. So more information required. If you have it, I would love to talk about it. Um, maybe in a future episode, I'll do a little research. Um, I think that anybody could learn something from technology uh, that's used in a comparable sport. So if they're doing one thing over here, there's no reason why we couldn't do the same thing over here with a little bit of tweak uh, lessons that they've gone through. Uh, in hockey could probably be applicable to aggressive or to uh, recreational or fitness. So thank you. That's a good question. I'll look into it. Uh, oh, oh. Um, JS, can you put a 50-50 frame up to the wish mediums from comparison? I can. Uh, let me find a 50-50 frame. Hold on. All right, so this is a large 5050 frame, and this is the large medium wish frame. Uh, you could see the um, best way to do it, I guess, like this. You could see the, uh, the 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 split is completely different. The groove is the biggest change. Um, this groove is, I want to say, it was like six mil deeper. Um, but it extends so much more down because of the wheel bite protection 
that the radius is much tighter. This is a lot uh, more shallow radius, which means that if you're doing rails and stuff, you have more, um, it, it more potential to slip out. Uh, you know, if you're skating coping or if you're doing rails, you're not going to slip out of this groove. You have more potential to slip out of this groove, especially if you're skating with juice blocks. But if you're skating ledges, this groove will be a lot more forgiving because then you can just kind of slide on the backside royale or something like that. Whereas here you really need to lock perfectly uh, to get that, uh, that balance right. But this is a large 5050 frame 270. This is a medium wish frame 269. Uh, I think the split in this is, uh, what is the split? 96 mil from one to, from two to three. I don't know what the split is here, but, um, it's big. <laughs> it's definitely big. It's, um, it's much bigger, but that's, that's your, that's your visual. If you were looking for that. Uh, a new, the new environmentally friendly Rosies are 47% cornstarch. What difference will that make to weight durability, etc.? Super, super interesting, right? So Rosies announced today, was it? Maybe today, this week is blown by because of my sick kid. If not today, this week, um, that they are producing a new uh, fifth element for uh, Nils Janssen's. It is a white boot with a dark, 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 dark blue um, sole plate uh, and uh, uh, dual injection lacing area. Um, I think it looks really nice. Um, it is um, Nils's second pro skate for Rosies. He had a f uh, Majestic 12 last year, which looked really great. Nils has a really good eye for colors. Um, I'm hoping that he is involved in this design. But um, the huge thing about these is that they are trying to make them more environmentally friendly. So obviously behind me, I've got tons and tons of plastic. This plastic is not going to be recycled. Um, it will be worn by grinding into ledges or into uh, you know concrete. Um, and then eventually it will disintegrate because plastic disintegrates and then thrown out. And that is not great for the environment. Rosies is looking at different materials and they've come up with a formula that uses a lot of cornstarch, which corn is a plant, so you can grow corn and create cornstarch. We have an abundance of corn in the United States. Um, using cornstarch as one of the uh, ingredients in their formula for creating their skates. Super fascinating, right? I never thought we would get to a point where that would be something people even considered. You know, it's always about performance. It's about making them lightweight, making them stronger, making them faster, making them more durable. But now they can say they're also more friendly to the environment. I think that's a really interesting concept. And again, Nils is a huge advocate of, um, you know, having a light uh, footprint. Um, if you haven't already, Mind Your Step is a documentary that uh, he was part of in last year, I think it was, 19, uh, 2019. And um, it kind of talks about his thoughts on things. I think he is vegan. Um, so he tries to walk as lightly as he can on the earth, which I have a lot of respect for. Um, I don't follow those practices, but to each their own. Um, I do what I can for the environment. But it's not something top of mind. It's not something that I ever really considered, especially with making products. Um, I know Cletus does some um, some mindfulness when he uh, is looking at products. I know he had some bearings that were using some different oils that were more earth friendly. His packaging is more earth friendly uh, with recyclable cardboard. I love that people are looking into that thing. I just haven't. Um, it's just not something that really even crossed my mind. The fact that Rosie's has is really interesting. What impact is that going to make to their skates? I honestly don't know. Um, these uh, these skates, I mean, they're going to last for years and years and years. How long will those skates last? I don't know. Um, I can't imagine they've skated them for years and years and years to test uh, the durability of them over time. And that might not be a problem, you know. Um, most of us buy new skates every couple of years, but there is a thriving secondhand market on Blade Trade Outpost on Facebook, for example, or on eBay. 
where people sell their old skates. You don't necessarily get rid of your skates because they're dead. You know, you don't, it's not like a pencil where you break your pencil or you run out of lead and it's like, oh, this pencil is no more, uh, not, not functional anymore. You just get tired of your skates or maybe you just don't like your skates anymore or maybe you just want to try something new. That doesn't mean that the skates aren't good anymore, but if this cornstarch thing doesn't last as long, I mean, that would be my biggest fear. If the cornstarch formula or the earth-friendly formula doesn't last as long as what we use now, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a lot of questions, you know? I think we're all just speculating. I think a lot of respect to Rossi's for going there and trying. I think the skates look great. I don't think they're gonna have any problems selling them. Um, but those are the questions that I have, you know? Are they going to be heavier? Are they going to be more or less durable? I, I don't know. Um, I don't know that I'm going to get a pair. Maybe I will. I don't know. When do they come out? Next month? Two months? They come out pretty soon, I think. Um, but I don't, I don't have any goal of getting a pair. I wasn't a huge fan of my original fifths, and I don't think that they've changed them that much. Um, I would rather save my money and get a pair of Carbons or a pair of Sways or a pair of Colts or something that I haven't skated so that I can review a new skate. But I'm really curious to see what they look like um, in person, what they feel like in person, and what people think of them after they get them on their feet. And if it is a success, is this the way that Rossi's is going to go from now on? Um, is the pricing going to be the same? Have they announced pricing? I think they have. I think it was about the same, wasn't it? So if it's the same pricing, and if it's the same durability, why wouldn't they switch? All good questions. Um, I'm excited about it. It's just a fascinating time to be in uh, skating with all the different technology and all the different people coming back, supporting skating. Um, I, I, Rossi's has had a huge year. Um, I see no reason why 2020 is going to be any less, uh, any less impactful. So, yeah, great question. Oh, Ben, you love the Andy Rocker. Oh, it's so good. Um... Paul San Jose, I've been skating the wish, the medium wish frames. I have similar wear on mine. I think it's more from turning sharp and the slides I use to stop. Maybe, um, oh, where'd they go? Maybe, you might be right. Um, again, it goes back to the wheels. Um, finding the right wheel profile, these would be wider wheels. So you would think that the effective size um, is bigger than an actual 58. You know, if you just had a rounded 58 or a rounded 65, technically the part that touches would be a couple mil in from this edge. So you would think that this is actually a bigger wheel. So labeled as 65 is probably closer to like to an effective 67, maybe a 68. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is me turning. I don't do very tight cross turns or anything like that with these frames. Um, I'm going to have to try that, though. It, it, it's too much of a... Let me check the other foot. Yeah, I, I have a little bit on this one, but not much. What's this, my left foot? I have a little bit on this one, but not much. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That's a really good theory, though. I think that it has a lot to do with the turning radius as well. But... I don't know what you can do about that. I mean, if anything, if you get smaller wheels, it's going to be even worse, right? You're going to start slipping out. I don't know that I ever had that problem with these mediums or with these large ones. I think that, yeah, I don't know. More research needed. Um, I'm going to be really curious when people get them and see if they pick up on the little things that I've picked up on. Um, yeah, really curious. Really curious to see what these frames... I, I think that the thing is that these frames are so good. These large frames are so good for so many people. It's not like he's going to stop making them, but like the medium, I would have loved to see something completely different, you know? Like, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what people think. Um, but I think a lot of people are going to stick with the large. I think the large is a really amazing frame. All right. So let's talk about some wheels. Um, there are, so um, how do I start? So I was very fortunate to find some wheels that I've been looking for for a long time that I've only heard about um, 
that um, I wanted to check out and I want to skate because I love technology and I love uh, little things that I can do to make my skating different. These are the M1 Trinity wheels. These are the 59 millimeter, 59 millimeter wheels. And as you can see, they're not like normal wheels. You can't find wheels like this uh, on the market right now. These came out, I wanna say in 2015, and um, they were only available for a few years. They were a more um, expensive wheel, obviously. They only retailed, I think they were like 45, maybe 50 bucks in Roller Warehouse. So it's not a huge amount of money more, um, but for whatever reason, they didn't stick around in the market very long. I've asked a few people what they thought of them and everybody has really fond memories. So I am going to set these up. I have a set of four. I don't have a set of eight. I have a set of four. And I'm gonna skate these on some balance frames this weekend to see what I think about them. Um, the selling point to these, there's a lot of selling points, but the, the main difference between these 59s and a standard 59 is that this has a dual durometer wheel. So the inside, this green part, is actually a softer material than the outside part. So I don't know if it's called Trinity because of that, but there are three materials here. There's the core, which is the standard core that you can see pretty well. There is the softer material on the inside, which is actually cut out. So it's kind of like a um, like a race car where they have you know the tire that extends out and the hub is a little bit smaller on the inside. I would assume that can help if you're skating, keeping the tire on the the transition. So if you're skating transition, it will keep it on the transition more and flex a little bit more. And then this outside is harder. This is listed as a 91A. So I would assume that this 91A is going to be hard, but hard for that only means more durable, right? Because if this inside is squishy, it's gonna be more cushioned than a typical 91 if this was just a 91 millimeter wheel all the way through. I saw these a long time ago when I started doing research for wheels and I, you know, my friend Eddie Hines um, was one of the guys behind these wheels. He worked with M1 on development and testing of these wheels. And he told me all about them and said, you know, you gotta try them. And I was like, oh, I'd love to try them. Where can I buy them? And obviously you can't buy them. Um, I got these at Oak City. They had a set of four that just came in from uh, La Beta. I think they were ported La Beta. Um, and I'm excited to try them. Um, I don't know what to expect, but I've heard really good things. I think that they're going to be a different feeling than the standard 91A 59 millimeter wheel. And I wanted to talk a little bit about why this is so interesting to me. Um, I didn't think twice about wheel technology when I was skating back in the 90s. You know, you would just buy wheels based on size. And it was usually the biggest wheel you could fit in your frame because you were skating any rocker. So you would skate the biggest urethane that you had on the outside and you would wear them down so far that they would get to the cores and then you would take the cores out and you'd put them in the middle and now you had new anti-rocker wheels. And then you would get new big wheels on the outside and you would skate them all the way down. We didn't think about profile. We didn't think about hardness. We didn't think about anything except for how much urethane was there and how much did they cost and what color they were and whether they look like, right? When I got back into it, um, I was kind of in the same mindset. You know, I would, I, my first wheels were these, um, oh, do I have them? I do, these Volo 58s. So these are the Volo uh, 58 millimeter 88A wheels. Um, I actually really liked these wheels. I don't know what I would think about them now after skating all of the different wheels and testing all the different wheels. But I really liked these wheels. First of all, they were super cheap. Secondly, they were fairly fast and they had a really nice profile, you know? Uh, these are pretty worn, not super worn, but pretty worn. But it had a really nice profile. It was a little flat on top, but it wasn't anything crazy. It was just a really nice, you know, it's what you would expect from a wheel. And this is what normal wheels look like, you know? Um, these are the... Um, the Stefan uh, Brando wheels that we sell, these are the 5050 ones. They are 60 millimeter uh, 90A. 
So they're uh, a little bit harder than these. Um, and they're a 60 millimeter, so you know, it's a rounded, very similar to this 58. Uh, it's a rounded profile. This is kind of what you would expect from a standard aggressive wheel now. 60 millimeter is a very popular size. Most of the 60 millimeter wheels are going to have the same style of hub. Um, you're gonna have this core that has a very thin hub, not much visible hub that sticks out. Um, it is just this standard, you know, little hub that, that every aggressive wheel has. Most aggressive wheels have, I should say. So the amount of urethane that goes in here, so this hub is like a 30 mil hub, I guess. Um, you know, the size that actually extends out. This is probably 26, um, maybe 28, it's small. Um, and then the amount of urethane that goes in there, it's a 60 mil wheel, so it's like 30 mil of urethane. It's not crazy, but that's like, what, 30 mil on each side or so. I can't do math when I'm thinking, when I'm not thinking. The, um, what's interesting is that, and, and I never considered this, is that some, um, some wheels use this hub for bigger wheels. So um, if you look at the 65s, these are the, uh, the Go Project 65s, and they use a very similar hub for these 65s. So you're adding even more urethane to the same hub which means that there's just more of this urethane outside. And they make it fairly responsive by using a harder urethane, but it's still just more urethane. And urethane, in my experience at least, can be kind of squishy the more that it gets packed on. Um, I skated these when I first uh, got my wish frames, these Go Project 72s. And as you can see, this is a 72 millimeter wheel compared to this 60 millimeter wheel. And it's using the same core, the same hub. So there is a lot of urethane up here. So this from, from here to here is all urethane. There's a little uh, ring on the inside, just like the ring on the inside here. But this same hub could be used for, uh, I mean a 56 millimeter wheel, a 58 millimeter wheel. There's so much urethane here that you do start feeling this squishy, squashy sort of feeling. And I never really thought about it until I started looking into making my own wheels. Um, I didn't have a problem with these wheels, but after skating some different wheels, I started thinking, you know what, there's probably something that we can do for 72s that would be better than just flooding it with urethane. So we made these, these compass wheels. These are the compass Durham wheels. Uh, these were the first wheels that Compass released. And these are uh, a very similar profile, very similar urethane to this um, Go Project wheel. These are 92A-ish. They don't list the ratings, but I checked and they come in around 91, 92. These are 85A. So these are a lot uh, softer, which means that they're going to provide more grip but you would expect them to be a little bit slower than these, these being a harder wheel. The catch is that because this uses a bigger hub, I found that the speed was very comparable between this wheel and this wheel, but I had a lot more cushion when I was skating with this wheel, a lot more um, grip when I was skating with this wheel than with the Go Project with the big, the big um, urethane without the big core. So that's where I really started exploring this whole core idea that there could be the same wheel, but with different cores and you can get completely different uh, ride from, uh, from you know, similar hardnesses. These are the wheels that came on my Aeon 72s. And uh, you can see it's a very similar sized core, just a different design. These have the little dots on them. I think the profile was a lot more bullet but you're gonna get a very similar feeling. This is a softer wheel on the outside. I think these are 88A on the outside. So instead of having a really hard, big, thick urethane wheel, using a bigger core and just having a little bit of urethane with a softer urethane, it's a really good formula for me. It, I, I found that it's been really effective. So there's some companies that went and made the big core thing um, 
kind of part of their line. So they even use them in uh, aggressive. So usually, you know, it's really hard to find. So where's this? So this 60, this 60 is, um, you know, a standard aggressive core. If you look at Undercover, if you look at uh, Eulogy, if you look at La Beta, any of these other uh, companies, you'll see that they usually use a fairly similar small core. This was a face wheel. So this is a 60 millimeter wheel, but if you look at the size of that core, this core is huge. Compare these two. Like this core is like 30 mil, 40 mil. I don't have my ruler out here, but that's a big core. Compare that to uh, this, uh, this compass wheel. You can see that this core for this 60 millimeter wheel is almost as big as the core for this 72. That's crazy. These are also 85A. So this urethane is a lot softer, which means that it's gonna provide a lot of grip and a lot more um, cushion when you're skating. But because it has a good core, it's gonna be a lot more responsive than if you just had an 85A wheel all throughout. Super interesting. Now there's been a few different companies that experimented with big cores. Um, I found these these are 67, they list as two and seven tenths inches because hyper. Um, but these were the Pleasure Tool Joyrides, very similar to the Hyper Giants, I think they were back in the days, uh, or maybe the Fat Boys. They have this core, it's a big core on the inside. So it's not unprecedented to have a big core on an aggressive wheel, but it's not super common. This is the big core, I don't know how big this one is, but compare this to the 72. It's a fairly similar size, just like this one with this face, fairly similar size. It's probably a little bit bigger than this face wheel, but it's also a little bit bigger wheel. So these were 84A, if you can believe that, uh, which means that they were super grippy, uh, nice and soft, gave a really good rebound and a really good bounce when you're skating, so a nice cushion. But again, because of that big core, it still had good responsiveness. There were a few different companies um, that experimented with the uh, big cores. Um, and a lot of them did it by um, just experimenting with different hardnesses of the core. Um, I think I've shown these before. These are the undercover um, 58 millimeter wheels. Technically not a dual durometer because I think that the inner core is just um, uh, you know, a single, it, it's like a specific core. It's not a standard undercover core. If you look at a standard undercover, oh, do I have one? Uh, yes. So this is a standard undercover profile, the 58. You can see it's a very square profile, but this is, you know, a contour flat. And you can see the core is different, not only from the size of the core, but on the little spokes of the core. These are super fast. And um, the reason that they're super fast, they are 88A, 88A on the outside. Um, but this core is so big. This core is bigger than the face core, about the same size of the face core. And it's super hard. So the, uh, the amount of urethane on the outside is really very, very small, which means that you're skating super fast because most of the impact is going to be on this core but you'll still get a little bit of grip and a little bit of cushion because this is a soft 88A. These are used for the Starlight Express uh, Broadway show in uh, Europe. They use these, there's a roller skating um, musical um, and they have rollerbladers and they use these uh, for doing their skating. They need super, super fast wheels. They're only skating on the inside, indoors. And these are super, super fast. The problem with these is this plexiglass. Um, if you skate them not on uh, wood ramps, um, have been known to crack from time to time, just because of the impact, it might be just this material. I don't know if this is the same material that we used to make frames out of, but it can be super brittle. Whenever you have a clear material, you can get a little bit more glassy and it can be a little bit more brittle. Um, undercover, however, I don't have a set they do make a dual durometer wheel. So, so far we've talked about big hubs, uh, big hubs, 
the core being big and the core being hard, meaning that the outside is soft, gives you a lot more speed, but still keeping with a nice grip. Undercover actually makes a dual durometer wheel that is soft on the inside and hard on the outside. It is the same size as this one. I wish I had a set, but it is a 58. It is soft on the inside. I don't know what the inside hardness is, and I don't know what the outside hardness is actually. But the goal there is that you can get a little bit more cushion when you're skating. If you look at the marketing for those, they'll say that it is the smoothest ride, that it is a comfortable ride. And I thought that was super interesting. I don't know if those are the first wheels. I don't know if those came before these, um, these M1s. I would assume that they came out around the same time when people were experimenting with wheel technology. But I love the idea of changing the wheel so that it can adjust to the sort of terrain that you're riding on. Um, why wouldn't you have a squishy core on the inside and a hard outside? It makes sense, right? It, if it's going to give you a little bit more bounce, a little bit more responsiveness, but still have a really hard outside so that it won't wear as fast, will slide much nicer. I, I think the concept's great. Um, Undercover also came out with, no, I'm sorry. Um, so not only did Undercover come out with them, um, M1 came out with a wheel that was their original dual durometer um, that was a hard core with a soft outside. I want to say they were 88A. Those are the ones that if you do a Google search, they're like orange or they're green. I don't have any of those either, but they were a soft outside, um, hard inside. And this is the opposite. So this is going to be a hard outside, soft inside. Really, really curious. Um, I don't know why we stopped experimenting. I don't know if it's because the um, market kind of crashed and we didn't have a ton of money um, and a lot of people buying expensive wheels. I know, um, you know, if these wheels were 45 to 50 bucks in stores, that's what they charge for the undercover dual durometer wheels. I've heard only good things about those um, dual durometer wheels. The only negative is this profile. I just, I cannot, I don't like this profile, so I won't skate them. If they had those with this profile, I would definitely pick up a pair to skate just because, uh, pick up a set uh, to skate just because I, I want to experiment with them. I want to see what it feels like. Um, yeah, so um, I don't really know uh, where we're going um, with wheel technology. I know that I'm super fascinating, uh, I'm super fascinated by different um, size cores, different um, squishiness on the inside, squishiness on the outside, different combinations. I think that the work that M1 did to develop this wheel, not to mention the really unique inner hub design that, you know, Kind of like a um, you know like a race car's uh, like a, a slicks uh, for uh, for a race car with this big tire on the outside. I think this is super fascinating. Um, I would love to uh, to make something like this and uh, just see if it sells, see if people like it. I'm gonna skate them this weekend and see what I think. I can only assume that these were a very expensive wheel to develop. And kudos to the M1 guys for. Um, putting, you know, putting it on and doing it. I know that the market must have been horrible back then. This is like the sort of technology that we would have invested in back in the 50-50 days, you know, in the late 90s when we were just, you know, money was just flowing. Um, there wasn't a ton of money in the mid-2010s. Um, so for them to be able to come out with a wheel like this is extremely impressive. Um, I'm going to skate them. I will report back um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel um, and I will put a, uh, uh, a video up this weekend, assuming that it's fairly dry. I'm going to be skating them outdoors to see what they feel like. Anti-rocker to see what they feel like. My um, thought is that it's going to feel like a normal wheel, which isn't a bad thing. I love skating an 88A anti-rocker. This being a 91A, I'm hoping that it'll feel like an 88A. I'm hoping that I will get this nice smooth ride that I expect with an 88, but maybe I'll have more durability. Maybe it will, I don't expect it to grip more, but maybe it will ride differently because of this inner hub thing. I don't know, super fascinating, you know? So um, stay tuned. Um, I hope to report back on this uh, at the next Gear Talk in uh, two weeks. Uh, 
All right. Um, questions, uh, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Um, so um, Sean Michelson uh, mentions that the uh, the Rosies is not the first brand to use bioplastic in uh, their skates. Apparently, there was a Sven Bokhurst uh, Pro Skate that had bioplastic, which is super fascinating. I'm going to have to look up those. I've never heard of that. Um, I'm assuming that it was a solo, and I will see if I can find it. And um, yeah, I, I, I again, I think technology is super fascinating. Um, who says that we have to use this specific plastic for making skates? I don't know. Let's test it. You know, that's why I love doing these wheel wheel tests and frame tests and skate tests. I don't know what works. I mean, you got to try it. So try everything and see if you can make it better. And if you can make it better, you know, make that next thing better. So it's weird that they stopped making them. I wonder why. Um, if the price was the same and if the durability was the same, just stick with it, you know. Don't make it marketing, make it just the new movement. This is just the way that things are. Uh, right. Um, the CCG, what would you say is the best frame for the buck? Would you go aluminum? Um, two questions, let me take a drink. Best frame for the buck. Um, without knowing anything about you, um, assuming that you are talking about grinder blading, um, you know, I own 5050, um, so full disclosure, um, I think, you know, these are amazing frames for 60 bucks. Uh, you, you know, you get the frame, you get the, the juice box included, the probably the highest quality hardware that you're gonna find in the industry. I think they're great frames. If you don't want to spend 60 bucks, um, definitely there are other options out there. I think the, um, uh, the Kaiser Fluid 4 is a really great frame if you're skating any rocker. Um, I think you can get some feather lights for pretty cheap. Um, and those are pretty great frames if you're skating any rocker. The, um, uh, a lot of people like the Volo frames, the old Volo frames, which are the Rossi's frames. I think they're really good for any rocker. And um, yeah, that's those are probably the three. You you shouldn't you shouldn't expect to pay more than sixty bucks for any of those. You can probably get them on sale for like forty. The nice thing about those frames is that they come on a lot of skates. So if you buy a pair of skates, you can trade in those frames or buy the skates boot only. So shops usually have uh, a lot of those frames sitting around, especially in black or white. So you can usually get a deal on a complete. You know, you can get a sixty dollar frame but it also includes the wheels so that could save you a little bit of money um if price were no op uh, object i i don't know i mean you're asking for best frame for your buck i do think the wish frames are an amazing frame um for your money if you like this style these things saw some serious use and they don't wear um the biggest problem with the frame business is that when you make better frames your business goes down because people don't need to replace them. So I know I've had these frames and I skated pretty hard on them for about a year um, and they look brand new. With the way that we're skating nowadays, mostly skate park and mostly, you know, ledges that have like angle iron on them, I'm not wearing through frames anytime soon. So really get the frames that you like that you think will skate best for you and, um, I think it's worth the investment. You know, anywhere around 60 bucks, you can go a little lower at 40, you can go a little higher at 80, but around that for a plastic frame, I, I, I'm a huge proponent of plastic frames. I think plastic is, for grinder blading, the way to go. Um, you asked about aluminum. Aluminum is a different beast. I don't skate a lot of aluminum frames. I don't have a lot of experience with aluminum frames. I think the Sola frame is probably the most um, popular and respected aluminum frame out there. They are really designed for skating transitions and um, skating flat. And you can replace the H blocks to make them better for any rocker, but ultimately it is designed for super responsiveness. Um, you want it, you know, the best boot that you can get, something with carbon would be ideal. You want the best wheels you can get, something with like a big hub or some of those famous wheels with the metal hub. Those are the sort of things that you're looking for with an aluminum um, frame. 
You want responsiveness, you want power, you want to go fast. For me, I don't know that I am good enough to really want that. <laughs> I feel like I go fast enough, thank you very much, uh, with my anti-rocker setups. And I'm happy to skate the way that I skate. Um, I know a lot of people love their solo frames. Those ground control frames just came out. I think they're hitting the shops this week uh, or last week. And um, they are a very similar design, 60 millimeter or 72 millimeter. And those look really interesting. The Kaiser Element 2 is another option. They're a little weird for wheel sizing, 68s on the outside, 60s on the inside. It has a really deep groove, very similar to that Wish um, deep groove for the medium Wish. Not sure that I recommend those Element 2s, but I haven't skated them. So again, I'm not the best person to ask about aluminum frames. The negative to aluminum frames that I've heard is that they take a bit to break in for soul tricks. The, uh, the side can be a little sticky. This goes for all aluminum frames because you've got this huge amount of aluminum rubbing up against coping, rubbing up against cement, rubbing up against steel or whatever they use for the angle iron. You gotta break that in, you know, whether it's the anodizing on the outside or the graphics or whatever, it will not slide as fast as plastic. You could wax the heck out of your frame and that might help, but you're not gonna slide as fast as you will with plastic. So for me, when I'm doing my skating, I think plastic is the way to go. Um, if you're interested in aluminum, I mean, check out the Solas. They're the most popular, and I think that uh, a lot of people really like them. Um, they're very expensive, though. You know, aluminum is a much more expensive material to make frames out of. If you're going strictly on price, I think the ground controls are 150, the Solas are 180, and the elements are 90, maybe 100. So those are kind of the three tiers that you can look at. Um, yeah, it just depends on what you're looking for. Um, I, I don't know that I would recommend an aluminum frame unless you know that you want an aluminum frame. If you have to ask me, you probably don't want an aluminum frame. All right, let's see. I'm way behind, but there's not a ton of questions, thankfully. Uh, ben, marbled uh, urethane face wheel. Uh, oh, this? No, it's spray paint. <laughs> it, it, and Sean asks, it is, not a, um, it is not a marbled wheel. This is a standard face wheel. These were kindly donated to me by uh, my good friend Jeff Metz. Jeff had a set of them, and he, I don't know what it was, but some sort of an art project um, where there was, they were put on a wall and they were spray painted. <laughs> I know you're gonna to have to ask Jeff about that. He sent them to me um, so that I can skate them and use them to model my 58s. So the 58 millimeter uh, 5050 wheels are a custom profile. I never got a chance to skate these wheels. They were sold out by the time I got back into blading and I wanted to see what this was like. And this 5050 frame fits a maximum of 58 millimeter wheels flat. I couldn't fit this in without modding the frame. So I wanted to make one of these, but in 58. So I used this and I sent the factory one of these and I said, make something like this with a little bit slighter angle and a little bit lo uh, shorter so that it'll fit a 58. And they came up with what I think is the perfect 58 millimeter wheel, um, which is the 50, 50, 58, which is what I sell in the, uh, the balance frames. So he was the donor for these wheels they are not marbled, they are spray painted. And um, without him, I wouldn't be able to uh, have these, uh, these beautiful 58s for, uh, for everybody to skate. Thank you, Jeff. What's the biggest wheel you, could, you got around you right now? Um, I have this 100, this is a 100 mil compass wheel. Um, I have a 110 over there and these are 125s over here. Um, anything bigger than, you know, 72. This is this is a fairly big wheel for aggressive. You can see the 72s on this uh, this wish frame. They're really big wheels. Um, the bigger the wheel, um, you know, the, the, the higher top speed and the more coast you're going to get. But it's going to take a little bit hard, a little bit longer for you to get to top speed. It's going to feel a little sluggish getting up to that top speed. It's gonna be a much smoother ride, but it's also a taller, um, taller frame. Um, you know, 72 versus 
you know, like the fitty fitty balance frame, if you're skating flat 58, this is a 58, this isn't my 58, but this is a, the Volo 58, that is a lot different than that. So if you were trying to do some tricks like top sides or if you were trying to do um, royales, this groove is typically much uh, taller, which means that you're going to have to get down lower. It's harder to do some tricks with taller frames than it is on shorter frames. So for me, I prefer the low profile frames for grinder blading. If you were skating urban, um, I love a 72 for urban. I love my... Um, Aeon 72s, these are an amazing skate. Um, these are flat 72 mil wheels, and um, I absolutely love these. I used to do grinder blading with them. So I think that the groove here is really nice. Um, I didn't have any problems with turning and rubbing over here. This is a lower groove, obviously, but it is a much more forgiving groove um, than the, the Wish simply because it doesn't have to worry about UFS. These 72 mil wheels go up into the boot a little bit because this isn't a UFS boot. These do go up into the boot a little bit, but they also have to use these 60s that go down. It's all about the math. I think this groove is really nice though. And um, yeah, um, 72s are probably the biggest wheel that I would recommend skating anything for grinder blading or any sort of grinds. Um, and then 125s. 125s are fun if you're skating straight for very long time distances. Um, if you're just skating around town, I prefer a 100 mil wheel. I think 100s are, these 100s, I think 100s are a lot of fun. They have a really good acceleration, but still a good coast. If you're just skating for distance, but you're not skating necessarily straight, 110s are a really good option. Um, yeah, um, big wheels are fun. Um, it is a very different feeling than, uh, than even skating, you know, 72s on aggressive frames, uh, skating any of these big, you know, big hub wheels, there's really no comparison. It is this floating feeling that you get, um, when you're on your skates. If you haven't skated big wheels yet, you definitely need to try them. As soon as it gets a little warmer, it's, it's more of a summer sport. I, I don't like skating big wheels in the winter cause I get cold. All right. Um, I think that is it. And there's a few 30 something blades. What are your thoughts on famous wheels? I think they look cool. Um, and Paul asks as well, what are the thoughts on famous wheels? Um, I think they look cool. The problem with famous wheels to me is that they're very specifically made for wood skate parks and not really made for skating cement or anything like they tell you don't skate these outdoors i think specializing in um, a specific discipline is really cool um, you know we've we've gotten to the point now with blading where you can create a product that's very specific and if you skate a sola frame with you know 60 mil famous wheels with um you know those titanium bearings or the the ceramic bearings on a carbon boot, like you're going to fly. And some people need that and want that. I don't, I don't personally, I don't know that I need that or want that. Um, one of the things that really interests me with this M1 is that the inside being soft is going to give me some good cushion. And I love, where'd they go? I don't have any, but like, like these, I love 88A. I think 88A is my um, perfect sweet spot but it does wear down a little bit faster. If I could find an 88A feel with a more durable outside, I mean, this is a really good compromise. The famous wheels are 88A, but because they have that huge hub, you're not gonna get the cushion that you would get with the urethane that you would find on a standard core uh, 58, 60 millimeter wheel uh, with 88A uh, urethane. I think they're amazing though. I think that the fact that they came out with them is, is really cool. I think a lot of people really like them. Um, but they're a very specific wheel. Um, they're specific for skating wood skate parks. And if you skate, um, you know, outdoors on cement and such, um, you know, they're going to wear and that's fine, but there's not a lot of urethane to wear. 
Um, and I've seen a lot of them, not a lot, but I've seen a few pictures of them getting dented. Like if you came down wrong, um, you know, denting the hub of the, of the wheel. I think that's just, you know, that's what you get for buying specialized wheels. Um, I think if you wanted to skate as fast as humanly possible, those are great wheels. Um, they're not going to be the most comfortable though. I don't have any ambition of getting them. Um, again, I, same with the aluminum frames. I'm not really that market. Um, I have old knees, you know, I'm 43 years old and I fall down a lot and I don't skate super fast. So, you know, I like my comfort. Um, and, um, I don't know that really hard, um, you know, core, big core wheels like that is, uh, is good for me. Um, it might be good for you, but, um, I, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend them for, for most people. I think, you know, Joe Atkinson skates them and kills with them. Um, I think CJ skates them and kills with them, but those guys are on a different level and they're skating bowls or they're skating wood transition totally acceptable use cases. Those are exactly what you need those wheels for. For me, I skate just cement, um, you know, cement skate parks and, uh, it's usually very good cement skate parks, but I don't know. I, I don't, I don't need to skate that fast. <laughs> all right. I'm starting to lose my voice. Um, thank you all so much for, um, coming on the show. Um, I really appreciate it. And, uh, thanks for all the kind words to my daughter who got sick. Um, she, uh, you know, family first, and, um, I don't like to postpone things. I always like to stick with the schedule and my commitments when things happen with family, um, everything stops and, you know, dad hat gets on and it's like, okay, what can I do? what's most important. So, um, really appreciate all the understanding. Um, I will probably be back in two weeks. I prefer doing this on Wednesdays. I will probably be back in two weeks to do another gear talk, um, on the Wednesday. Um, I don't know what day that is, but in two weeks and, um, yeah, thank you all for joining me. If you have any questions or anything that I didn't address, or you wanted to talk a little bit more, please leave a comment on the video, or you can find me on Instagram or Facebook and, uh, I'll see you guys in two weeks.